It's happening, quietly but fast. Electric boats aren't some futuristic gimmick anymore. They're real, they're growing, and they're coming straight for your marina in 2026. Whether you're a hardcore cruiser, a weekend sailor, or just someone who likes walking the docks, this shift is about to change how we think about boating altogether. No more engine rumble, no more fuel dock fumes. Just clean power, quiet rides, and charging stations popping up where diesel used to rule. In this video, we're diving into the five biggest reasons electric boats are about to rewrite the rules of the marina. From new infrastructure to shifting owner habits, from sexy new models to hidden costs, it's all here. This isn't just a tech trend, it's the next chapter in the story of boating, and ready or not, it's already underway. Pull into most marinas today, and you'll find the same old layout. Diesel pumps at the fuel dock, a few water hookups, and a basic electrical post at each slip. But fast forward to 2026 and you'll start noticing something very different. High capacity charging stations, solar integrated docks, and boats plugging in like Teslas at a supercharger. This shift is already in motion. Across Europe and North America, forward-looking marinas are investing in electric infrastructure. Why? Because the boats are coming. Fast. From sleek day cruisers to full-size cabin boats, the electric segment is growing every quarter. And just like with cars, these vessels need a place to charge. That means new demands on marinas. Regular shore power posts won't cut it for a full charge. We're talking serious upgrades. Higher amperage, faster connections, smart systems that can handle multiple boats drawing power at once. It's not just about plugging in. It's about power management, safety, and future scalability. Some marinas are even experimenting with renewable energy, installing solar panels or small wind turbines to offset the load. Others are working with local utilities to boost grid capacity or implement timed charging rates. It's a whole new layer of logistics that marina managers never had to think about when fuel was king. And here's the kicker. Boaters will start choosing marinas based on who has fast, reliable charging. Just like EV drivers plan road trips around charging stops, electric boaters will seek out the best equipped harbors and avoid the rest. So, if your home marina still thinks the future is diesel and a dusty boatyard, they might be in for a rude awakening. Because the marina of the future isn't just about slips, it's about watts, not gallons. And the marinas that adapt fastest? They're the ones that are going to thrive. If you've ever started a diesel engine at 6am in a quiet anchorage, you know the feeling. Guilt? That deep, throaty rumble echoing off every hull around you, waking up anyone still in their bunk. Now, imagine pulling away in silence. Just a faint hum and a clean wake. That's the magic of electric. And it's a big reason why more and more boaters are saying goodbye to diesel. This isn't just about noise. Diesel engines are dirty, smelly, and expensive to maintain. Oil changes, filters, belts, hoses, injectors, there's always something. And when something really breaks, you're in for a wallet-crushing repair, usually far from the parts you need. With electric propulsion, the moving parts are minimal. There's no fuel system to clog, no oil to spill, and far less that can fail. Then there's the user experience. Electric motors offer instant torque, whisper quiet operation, and a level of control that's perfect for tight marinas or docking solo. You tap the throttle and it moves. No warm-up time, no shifting delays, just smooth, quiet, precise motion. Environmental pressure is another big driver. Harbors are under scrutiny. Governments are tightening emission standards. Some regions are already introducing zones where combustion engines are restricted or banned entirely. Electric boats are the easy answer. Zero emissions, no fuel slicks, no bilge stench. And yes, battery range is still a limitation, especially for offshore passages. But for coastal cruising, day boating, and weekend getaways, the numbers are already workable. And with battery tech improving fast, the gap is closing every season. We're not saying diesel is dead, not yet, but it's on notice. Because once you've cruised in near silence, without a hot engine bay or oily hands, it's hard to go back. The electric future isn't just coming, it's showing up at the dock with no fumes and a grin. It's easy to get excited about electric boats. Clean, quiet, low maintenance, and futuristic. But there's one critical question nobody's asking often enough. Can your marina actually support them? Because as more electric boats hit the water, a lot of marinas are going to find themselves dangerously behind the curve. The truth is, most marinas were built for a different era, when boats ran on diesel and needed little more than shore power to keep batteries topped off. But an electric boat isn't just topping up house batteries, it's trying to recharge its entire propulsion system, often overnight or between day trips. That's a massive difference in power draw. If a marina only has 30 amp or even 50 amp shore power pedestals with no fast charging capability, a full charge could take days. 
And if multiple boats are trying to charge at once, you're looking at brownouts, tripped breakers, or worse. Add in older wiring, underpowered transformers, and tight dock layouts, and you've got a recipe for frustration, or outright danger. The marinas that are taking this seriously are investing now. They're partnering with utility companies to upgrade service capacity. They're adding smart charging stations that can balance loads between slips. Some are installing solar panels, battery banks, and demand response systems to avoid overloading the local grid. In some parts of Europe, electric-only docks are already a thing. But many marinas, especially smaller, privately owned ones, are still in denial. And that's a problem. Because as more electric boats hit the market in 2026, boaters are going to start making marina choices based on charging access the same way EV drivers choose rest stops with fast chargers. If your marina isn't planning for this shift, you could end up with a beautiful electric boat and nowhere to charge it. The technology is moving fast, but infrastructure takes time. Ask questions now. Tour your dock. Look at the pedestals. Because when the electric wave hits full speed, it's going to separate the ready from the outdated and fast. Electric boats are no longer just prototypes or pricey experiments. They're here. They're real. And in 2026, some seriously exciting models are hitting the water. Whether you're looking for a weekend cruiser, a sleek tender, or even a long-range catamaran, the electric boat world is growing fast, and smart sailors are paying attention. Let's start with the Candela C8, a hydrofoiling day cruiser from Sweden that's turning heads for all the right reasons. It lifts out of the water at speed, drastically reducing drag, and delivers longer range than nearly any other electric boat in its class. Plus, it's insanely smooth to ride and whisper quiet. Then there's the X Shore one, also from Sweden. Think of it as the Tesla Model 3 of the water. Sleek, minimalist, and priced to bring electric boating to a wider market. It's ideal for the coastal cruising and short hop adventures, with a smart layout and impressive build quality. On the catamaran side, keep an eye on the silent yachts lineup. These fully solar electric multi-hulls have already proven themselves capable of serious cruising without ever plugging in. And for 2026, they're rolling out new models with upgraded battery tech and larger solar arrays, making them even more self-sufficient. For sailors, there's also growing interest in hybrid electric assist systems, like those offered by OceanVolt. More and more builders are integrating electric motors as auxiliary power in blue water capable sailboats, giving cruisers the option to sail most of the time, but motor silently when needed. And don't overlook the startup scene. Companies like Navier, Arcboats, and Emotion are pushing boundaries with smart tech, integrated navigation systems, and lightweight designs built specifically around electric propulsion. Bottom line, 2026 is shaping up to be a breakout year for electric boats. Whether you're window shopping or getting ready to pull the trigger, these models and the ideas behind them are going to reshape how we think about life on the water. Switching to an electric boat sounds like a dream. No noise, no fuel bills, no greasy engine work. And a lot of that dream is true. But like anything in boating, the devil's in the details. Going electric brings real perks, but also a few hidden costs that can surprise even experienced skippers. Let's start with the good stuff. One of the biggest perks? Maintenance. Electric motors have far fewer moving parts than diesels, no oil changes, no belts, no cooling system leaks, no exhaust issues. For many owners, especially solo sailors or weekend cruisers, this simplicity is priceless. You save time, stress, and a whole lot of money over the long haul. Another huge benefit is silence. Cruising at five knots with nothing but wind and water sounds is an experience that diesel just can't match. It's peaceful, it's relaxing, and it makes you feel more connected to the water. Plus, electric boats are way better neighbors than a marina or anchorage. No fumes, no rumble, just good vibes. But now, the hidden costs. First, range anxiety is real. Unless you're buying a high-end solar cat or a hybrid setup, most electric boats today are best for short to medium range cruising. That's fine for day trips or harbor hopping, but it can limit spontaneity on longer journeys. You'll have to plan your charging stops just like EV drivers on long road trips. Then there's the charging infrastructure. Many marinas aren't ready. Sure, you can plug into shore power, but if you're hoping for a fast top-up during lunch, good luck. High-speed marine charging is still rare, and marina upgrades take time and money. Battery replacement is another cost people forget. Most marine lithium batteries last 10 to 15 years with good care, but when they go, they're expensive. Think several thousand dollars, not a couple hundred. Still, for many boaters, the trade-offs are worth it, especially if you mostly day sail cruise short distances, or live aboard in a sunny climate where solar charging can do the heavy lifting. So yes, electric boats come with surprises, but so does every boat. 
The difference is that with electric, most of the surprises are quieter, cleaner, and a lot more future-friendly. So there you have it. Five big reasons electric boats are storming into marinas in 2026 and changing the game for everyone on the water. From charging docks replacing fuel pumps, to the quiet exodus away from diesel, to a fresh wave of electric models that are smarter, cleaner, and more fun to own, this isn't just a trend, it's a full-blown shift. And yeah, there are challenges. Range limits, marina infrastructure, the price of battery tech. But the momentum is real, and the boat world is starting to look a whole lot different than it did just a few years ago. Whether you're ready to go electric, still on the fence, or just curious what all the hype is about, one thing's for sure. The future is arriving fast, and the marinas that don't adapt, they're going to get left behind. If you want to stay ahead of the wave, make sure you're subscribed. We've got more deep dives coming on smart upgrades, solar cruising, real-world range tests, and what it actually costs to run one of these boats full-time. Until then, fair winds, full charge, and may your slip always have the good outlet.